Hello, this is Brio of Brio Sheet Productions, and today I'm going to show you the basics of the camera in Swift 3D. So let's say you have a logo, like my Brio Sheet Production presents here, and you're wanting to add an animation to it, but you're not wanting to actually animate the logo itself, but you're wanting to do some camera movement. Well, you can either choose the free camera or the fixed target camera, which basically means the free camera has no target and it will focus on whatever you want to point it at and the um, target camera will focus on whatever you have the target point as. So for this usually I like to put this in the top view because it makes it easier to work the cameras when you have the logo stationary like that. And since we're doing a logo we'll do the fixed camera and basically what that does is puts the camera in there and then puts the target position. So if you were to go over here and set the camera to a target camera, you will see what this camera sees. So if I was to pick this up and move that, you could see that the camera is just basically focusing on the logo itself. So you can zoom out, zoom in, do whatever. Um, I'm going to put that right back where it was. So let's say you're wanting to do an animation with this, and usually I put mine to 18 frames per second. That's just the default for my movies. And what we're going to want to do is have the logo kind of come in like this. It'll start over here, it'll come in, and go past like that. So, on your first frame, Put the camera where you want it. Then basically all you do is just click animate, take it to uh, about we'll say 50 frames, just drag this on over. And that's basically it. What that'll do is make the animation. And voila, that's basically it right there. You just gotta render it, and that's what it'll look like. Now you can move the camera up, down, left, right, whatever dimension you want to move it in. Like, let's say I want to, uh, instead of going from left to right, I want it to go actually upward, like that. And as you can see, that's what's going to happen with that. So it's going to go up and over like that. So, you know, the sky's the limit with this. Whatever way you want to put the camera, that's where it's going to go. Um, obviously, since I'm in the middle of the frame like that, it's going to go kind of screwy. Yeah, see, it, it takes a little tinkering with, but uh, you'll be able to get it the way you want it to at the end. If you don't like it, just delete the keyframes by right-clicking and uh, delete the selected keyframe. It'll get rid of that and just go right back to the normal way they had it. Now, that's the fixed camera where basically whatever target you have the position on, um, is where it's going to focus and you can actually change that too let's say I want to move the target somewhere else all you gotta do is click right on that red dot right there and just move it wherever you want or you can go over here and click on the red dot and just click and drag and move it wherever you want it to go and I probably want to put that back on the top but just keep in mind when you're doing that is changing the pivot which is um, a totally different thing from the position. The position is basically where the camera is in the field, which is basically the whole camera itself, and then the pivot is just basically the target, oops, not the logo, <laughs> but the uh, target wherever it's fixed at, and that's gonna change with that. So, you know, let's say if you drag this right here back, that just basically means when it plays out, it's going to go to that position sooner than the camera. So we'll play that. See there, it's moving there, and now it's going to stay fixed because it has no animation after that. So it's just like the animation with anything else, but you got to tinker around with it. And sometimes it doesn't want to work the way you want it to. I probably had about 15 different takes with some of my logos for Crossing Bound just because the camera didn't want to work. Now that's the target camera. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put in a free camera. Now the free camera is just basically that. Pretty much a free camera. It doesn't have a fixed location. If you move it, 
it's going to stay in the same position. It's not going to rotate anywhere or move anything like that. You have to actually do that yourself. You can go down here, move the pivot up, down, left, right, tilt it, make it go upside down. There is no fixed pivot. And usually for this camera, as soon as I straight it back out, I just use it for basically panning. You know, no abrupt movement, but just going back, forth, left, right. Pretty simple stuff. So let's say I wanted to scroll on by. Um, let me go back to the first frame and set that. You got to make sure you set your first frame um, before you actually do the other animations. You know, you want to make sure you set the first frame and then the last frame at separate points, otherwise it's going to go all screwy for you. So let's say at frame 80, I'll just click this right here and use the arrow keys to move it left. I mean, right. <laughs> Gotta know you're left from your right. And then it'll just basically scroll on by. And you can see the pivot doesn't move. It doesn't go up or down or left, right, whatever, because I chose for it not to. And it's just basically like the other one. Uh, you can move it up, down, left, right, and do whatever. You know, the sky's the limit. Just make sure you tinker with it a little bit and just get a feel for it. And I'm going to delete that. And I'll just go over here and delete it. You can have as many as you want, too. See, I could have, like, three different cameras, six different cameras, whatever, all do, doing different things. Um, as for example, I actually pull up one of my old projects that has that. Let's see. I think this is... Yeah, we'll do that one. Here's the old Mecha Brio. As you can see, there I have... Quite a few different cameras, I think. No? I guess it's on the other file. <laughs> Close that. You have so many different scenes and whatnot, it's hard to remember which ones are which. Uh, I guess that's the one. Yeah, that's when the explosion happens. Alright, well anyways, I'll just use that as the point of reference. So basically, here's my camera, and when I press play, you'll watch and see what it does throughout the whole scene. Here's what the camera sees, and here's what you're going to be able to see what the camera's doing. So, it's going to be a little slow because there's a lot of crap going on at once. There's the explosion, and the camera doesn't start moving until after. See there, it just jumps right to there. Let me zoom back out because I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> see, you can it, see it's focusing right there on the explosion, and it's just zooming out to where MBU is. And that's just all it is. It's just little camera movements. You gotta you gotta pretend like you're actually on a set, and that's what this is. It's just a set. You know, like this is a big studio. You know, here's your main set right here. And this is basically your camera guy. And you're just going to drag him out to wherever you want him to go. You know, I can put him here, put him there, put him everywhere. And that's just basically it. It's um, like working a regular camera only in a 3D environment or a virtual reality environment. And you're just, uh, oh, um, one important thing. Um, when you are rendering it, you want to make sure the... Uh, Active one is the one that you want to have, like the target camera. Otherwise, when you go to uh, the preview and export, and you say, let's say, just um, generate all frames. <clears throat> See, I had the top one activated, so it's just going to render everything that's on top, and it's not going to render what you want. So what you got to do is just hit cancel, go back to the uh, scene editor, and make sure you have your target camera selected. To start rendering. And that's usually easily fixed. You'll, you'll you'll realize it when you're rendering it. It's like, oh god, this is not the scene I wanted. And it's like, oh wait, I gotta go back and click the uh, target camera scene for it to render. But that's just basically it. Um, there's really nothing too much more to say. It's just all experimentation, trial by error. That's kind of what half of this stuff is. Um, if you have any more questions, just let me know and I'll see if I can best answer them. Uh, thank you for watching.